I spent five days in the ICU by myself. I am having all of these symptoms and nobody can figure out what is going on. You have a 50-50 chance of surviving. It felt like I was breathing through a straw, even with the oxygen in my nose. I've never experienced a pain so bad in my life. Like, if I did not have Jesus in my life, I can almost guarantee that I would have died. What's up guys, it's Alina and today I am going to be sitting down for a little bit of a more serious video. I have been waiting many, many months to record this video because I feel like testimony is very important and the Bible directs us to testify of the goodness of God. So today I'm going to be giving kind of a story time, a testimony of something that happened a few months ago in the month of February. And I don't want to give like too much of a intro to it because it's going to be a very very long video but i just pray that all of you are blessed by this testimony so just to give you guys like a quick little intro i had covid in january i barely had any symptoms i had the loss of taste and smell and the nasal congestion and other than that that was it like i did my quarantine went back to work went back to school and i was perfectly fine so all of these things that I'm about to talk about occurred probably three weeks after me getting out of quarantine, like two or three weeks after me getting out of quarantine. So to start off, Saturday the 13th, Saturday, February 13th, which was the day before Valentine's Day, I woke up with a fever. It was like a low grade fever, really, really low grade. It was like 99.4 that I remember. And I also had like a little bit of chills, but nothing like super, super serious that I couldn't like handle. So I went about my day, I took a shower to see if it would help my fever, and then I took some ibuprofen and so, or some type of medication, and all of my symptoms subsided temporarily. So in the afternoon, I remember that I took a test for my microbiology class, and I was perfectly fine. That afternoon, I did have a boyfriend at that time, so we went to Dave & Buster's, which was like an hour and a half from my house and I was perfectly fine that whole time and I was out literally the whole afternoon and I didn't come back until like eight or nine o'clock. So at the time that we were driving back, um, my chills had kind of started up again and I was telling him like, I'm really cold, like I don't know why I feel so cold. So he takes me home and as I'm getting out of the car, my body is already starting to lock up a little bit. Like I'm getting like a little bit of body aches. And so I was walking really, really slow towards my house. And when I go inside, my parents noticed this because they were both sitting on the couch and they're like, what's wrong with you? Because I was like so stiff and everything was hurting me. I was like, I don't know. I'm in a lot of pain. My body hurts. I really wanted to cry like when I was changing my clothes because my body was hurting me so much and I felt so stiff. So at that point, I put on a hoodie, sweatpants, fuzzy socks. I get in my bed, which has like three blankets in it, and I was still cold. The next morning, I woke up and I was a little bit worse. So the next day, it was Valentine's Day. In the morning, as soon as I woke up, <clears throat> I went to the hospital that I work at. I'm not going to say the name of the hospital that I work at because I do still work there. But you guys are going to hear the rest of this crazy story. So... I go to the hospital, they did an EKG for me because my heart was beating really fast, which usually means that you're in pain, so my heart was beating really fast, it was like in the 140, 130, 140 range, and the normal is 120, so they take me straight back into the room, start doing all of these tests, because at this point my fever was going up, it was already like at 102, 103, around there, so I had the fever, my chills were really bad, I was starting to have abdominal pain, and the body aches were really bad. So they take me into a room, they do all types of tests, including a CT scan, all types of blood work. Basically, all of the test results were coming back negative, normal, negative, normal, negative, normal, except for my magnesium, which was a little bit low. So because everything was negative and normal, they're like, there really isn't any, any explanation for why she's having these symptoms. So the very last thing that they tested me for again was COVID, even though I had just had COVID two or three weeks before. So my test came back positive and they told me one of two things could have happened. They're like, you could have caught a new strain, which is very, very unlikely, or you could still be testing positive from the first time. So either way, the test is positive. We're just gonna send you home, take some Tylenol, ibuprofen, do all of like, drink the fluids, all of that stuff. So they send me home. As soon as they disconnect me from everything, 
all of my symptoms started again. They had subsided for a little bit, but as soon as they disconnected me and I started walking out to the car, my chills started again. We went home and at this point, it was already like the afternoon, like I wanna say it was like four or five in the afternoon. And so as I'm at home, my chills are getting worse to the point that my body was hurting. Like I was shaking so bad that my body pain was getting worse, my body aches. And so that night, my chills were so bad that my mom hadn't seen it and my fever wasn't going down. That was really like my mom's main issue. My abdominal pain was increasing so greatly and my mom was concerned because she was like trying to do like the wet rags and my fever was still really, really high. So I remember that she tried to pick me up to, um, she tried to pick me up for something, I don't remember. And she picked me up like this, like she pulled my arms and then she put me back down on the bed and I started screaming because my shoulders, like my whole back was stiff. Like it felt like I had fallen on a rock when she put me back down on my bed and she was like, we have to take you back to the hospital. So we go to the hospital, back to the same one at 11 p.m. I waited in the waiting room for almost six hours. People were coming and going and I was still there. At this point, my fever was extremely high. It was already at 103, over 103. My chills were like on fire. Like I had, my chills were so bad. I had my body aches. I was getting, I was starting to get like um, nauseous. So I was vomiting at around like five o'clock in the morning, they take me back. And they told me literally the same thing. They ran almost all of the same tests. Everything was still the same. And they're like, you have COVID and there is nothing we can do about it. So they send me home after this. And at this point, it was already Monday. It was already like Monday at 11 or 12 that they sent me home. And the exact same thing happened. They disconnected me from everything. I got in the car, my chills started back up. Like there was literally nothing that we could do to control it. So during the four hour period before we go to a different hospital, all of my symptoms kind of started to spiral my abdominal pain was truly like the one that hurt the most and i'm gonna insert a video of basically how bad i was before going into the next hospital that i'm going to talk about so <sighs> All of our family and friends that had known about what was going on, they were obviously concerned. And they're like, you have to take her to the other hospital. So we go to the other hospital. We explain to them, give them a short summary of everything that was happening. And they take me straight into a room in the emergency department. At this point, I feel like that it, this is when everything, like literally, the best way for me to describe it is that all hell broke loose. I was vomiting and pooping at the same time. My stomach was hurting. I was crying, screaming. My chills were bad. My fever was like through the roof. My body aches. I was literally in so much pain everywhere. Like I, I've never experienced a pain so bad in my life. Like I can't even explain how I was feeling. <laughs> They were running around like these people were like on top of me because they knew that something was not right because my blood pressure was extremely extremely low and um my blood pressure was low and my heart rate was extremely high so they were like trying to stabilize me and figure out what was going on and the first thing my mom told them was she already had COVID. They told her that she had COVID, but she already had it. They run all the standard tests and they tested me for COVID again. They said that it's just a standard. We know that you probably don't have it, but we have to do it anyways. So on that day, which was only a day after that I had went to the hospital that I work at, I tested negative. So they tested me for all of these other things. And really their main concern at this point was the fact that my blood pressure was so low. Having low blood pressure is extremely, extremely dangerous. It can cause your organs to fail, all kinds of different things. And literally that same day I went into the ICU. This is something I haven't, first of all, I have never been this sick ever in my entire life. So for me to get sent to the ICU, it was one of the most terrifying, it was probably the most terrifying experience that I've ever had in my entire life. So I go into the ICU I spent five days in the ICU by myself. 
because my COVID test result had come back so late, they ended up putting me into the COVID unit and putting me on COVID precautions because my test result hadn't come back yet and they already I had already tested positive at the other hospital. Those five days were the worst five days of my life. I was completely incapacitated. Like I could not do anything. I laid there for five days straight. I had five IVs in me all at the same time. I was still experiencing all of these symptoms and we just had to wait for the Whatever was going on, we just had to wait for it to run its course. Anytime that anyone would try to move me, I would be screaming, crying in pain because my body was in a lot of pain. They had to give me, I think at some point they gave me like morphine or the oxycodone because I was in a lot of pain. They had actually diagnosed me with septic shock. I did not have COVID. A septic shock is basically when there's some type of infection, some type of problem in the body that your whole body, all of the defenses go to attack that infection. And as the body goes to attack that infection, it forgets about all of the other body functions, which causes the body to go completely haywire, which is why I was having the low blood pressure and the high um, heart rate. And then I was vomiting and I had the fever and the diarrhea. All that stuff was pretty much caused by the septic shock. So they diagnosed you with that while I was in the ICU. When you are in septic shock, you have a 50-50 chance of surviving. I did not know this. I did not find this out until after I had already left the hospital that the chance of me dying from this was extremely high. I did not know. But thankfully, nobody told me because if I would have known, I think that I would have driven myself crazy. It was a very, very traumatizing experience is what I want to say because I also went through that all by myself. I was very fatigued and very tired throughout that whole time. Now, I'll send out plug in some videos too of when I was in the hospital that I was sending videos to one of my friends and you can see in this video that I'm like I'm basically completely out of it trying to explain to him what's going on and I like I can't like I was just getting tired they weren't able to find anything they just overhydrated me a little bit so I have some chest pain my lungs are filled with water that first day, they also realized that they over pumped me in, with fluids. So I was on oxygen too throughout probably about half of the time that I was in the hospital, I was on oxygen. So my the whole area like outside of my lungs was filled with fluid. It felt like I was breathing through a straw, even with the oxygen in my nose, which is why in the video I sound like I'm so tired. All of my test results at this point were still coming back negative, normal, negative, normal, negative, normal. They could not figure out what was causing me to get so sick. So the only thing out of all of the exams that they did do that came back positive was the toxin for c diff so that was something that like i really didn't understand to be quite honest with you when you do a c diff exam there's two tests they basically say that if one is almost always going to be positive but if the other one is negative then that means that you don't have it so i'll put the test results here the first test was positive and then the second test was negative so that just means that the disease was dormant and then i really didn't actually have it the second day of me being in the ICU, they took me to do a laparoscopy, which is something that I have never done in my life either. I've never had any surgeries, never had anything cut into me. So they, I have three incisions and I still have the scars on my stomach from the incisions that they did trying to figure out um, what was going on. So the only thing that they figured out was that there was some extra fluid that was covering like my whole abdominal area. They didn't know where it came from, but that was really all they got out of that. They didn't find anything around the fourth day of me being in the ICU was when I realized that this was a spiritual attack. I was like, there is absolutely no way that I am having all of these symptoms and nobody can figure out what is going on. And I was talking to God during this time and I was just like really trying to connect as best as I could and to keep worship music playing in my room. I had a spiritual encounter, which is also something that has never happened to me before. I have never seen anything, never seen angels, never seen nothing. This was the first spiritual encounter that I have ever, ever had in my life. I was laying in my bed in the ICU and all of a sudden I recall opening my eyes and I saw in the corner of my room that there was a nun and she was dressed completely in gray and her face was literally so pale and dried out. It was disgusting. 
So what this nun was doing was basically mocking me. She was putting hand sanitizer in her hand sanitizer in her hand and like wiping it all over her mouth and like laughing at me and making fun of me, trying to make me throw up because the whole time that I was in there, I was vomiting a lot. Like all the time I was vomiting, anything that they would give me, I was basically throwing it up because my stomach was not okay. So she was trying to make me nauseous, trying to make me vomit, trying to make me feel weak and defeated. And so I started to pray and I was like, Reprendo esto en el nombre de Jesús. Like this cannot. I I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Lo reprendo, lo reprendo Dios. And I just started praying. And I knew at this point that death was literally right there. And if I did not have Jesus in my life, I can almost guarantee that I would have died during the fourth or fifth day of me being in the ICU. But me praying this spirit out of my room, this spirit that was trying to attack me, I really just like elevated myself so much like my faith in god so that happened and i go to sleep and so on the fifth day friday they send me out of the icu i don't remember if it was friday or saturday but they sent me out of the icu and they sent me back to the regular room also mind you i actually forgot to mention this I had an A-line in my neck, so I still have a scar somewhere on here on my neck. So that um, was for the uh, blood pressure medication. So they told me that they couldn't move me to a regular room until they had stabilized my blood pressure and were able to take the arterial line out. So they put that in during the surgery and then they didn't take it out until I moved from the ICU as they were trying to stabilize my blood pressure. So um either friday or saturday i got taken out of the icu so it was probably friday but the scary thing about that was that as soon as they like took me off of everything i started to relapse i was in a regular room my fevers had started again i hadn't had any problems like throughout the five days that i was in the icu and everything was controlled so i had this fever again and at this point my mom was able to come visit me also so she was in the room and she was seeing all of this stuff happening my chills had started again. I was throwing up. My fever had gone up again. And the nurses were freaking out. So all of these people were like running around. Like at one point there was like four different nurses and the nursing assistants in the room trying to figure out what to do, how to make me feel comfortable because I had just gotten out of this situation and now everything is relapsing. So I was like that for about like... I want to say like overnight and by the next day I was fine again so everything after this kind of started to slow down I was on antibiotics for the whole time that I was there vancomycin was my bestie <laughs> while I was in there I was taking vancomycin um I think like two or three times a day while they were trying to control it and it is a very very toxic medication like they only use vancomycin in emergency cases I learned about that in school by Monday I was already like getting better but that whole weekend from friday to sunday i was extremely weak still like i couldn't do anything i couldn't stand up my legs were i don't even know how to ex give you like a size reference but my legs were swollen they were extremely swollen my feet were swollen from laying down so many days and getting so much fluid monday or tuesday <clears throat> i had started to feel better I was trying to stand up a little bit, trying to get like the blood moving so that my legs could stop like swelling. They gave me um, diuretic medication so that I could like pee everything out. And so at this point was also when a lot of other problems started to happen was when they gave me this medication. So all of my potassium, my iron, my magnesium, everything was low because I was peeing literally like five times an hour. I, as soon as I would sit down, I felt like I had to pee again. Monday or Tuesday, um, no, it was definitely Tuesday, um, I was getting an iron infusion in my arm, and my vein got infiltrated. So, I will show you guys the scar, because I still have it. You can still see it. So, that was where the IV was, right here. And you can see that the dye is still, you can still see it going kind of up my arm. So, it infiltrated my arm, and I have this scar now. And... After this, um, the whole night, my arm was swollen, first of all. It was hard and swollen. And I told the nurse, like, look at my arm. Like, on this day that it happened, my arm was, like, basically, like, blue. So, 
once I was able to stand up on my own, kind of, they take out this, um, the water out of one of my lungs. They couldn't do both of them because they said that it was, like, too dangerous and that there was, like, a very high chance that I was going to end up with an infection if I did that. So they took out the water out of one of my lungs. And then after that, they did the ultrasound of my arm to figure out what was going on. And then the following morning, the results came back that I had, like, a blood clot in my neck. So... After the surgery, they had put in the A-line, and then after the surgery, when I got back to the room, they had to take it out for some reason and then put it back in, and I guess when they did that, it, like, ended up popping the vein or something like that. They had to leave me on a continuous heparin drip for two days to make sure that the clot would be dissolved, and then after that, I was on blood thinners for a few months because they wanted to prevent me from getting another um, blood clot. Throughout this whole two weeks, I was basically on a liquid diet. Um, I couldn't eat any actual food i was eating popsicles and popsicles and it was basically just that popsicles italian ice and chicken broth for basically two weeks i think that that was it so saturday morning saturday by like afternoon i was able to go home so essentially the point of me telling this story is because i was able to see the grace of god over my life during this entire experience so many things could have went wrong, especially with me having such a low chance of surviving. So many things could have gone wrong. I could have very well went into organ failure because my potassium levels were low. That can literally send your heart into shock, basically. So my lungs could have collapsed. Like A lot of different things could have happened, but God didn't allow it to happen. And I really just... I'm so grateful. Ever since that experience I have that happened, I am so grateful to know that God was the one that sustained me through that experience. The worship music, prayer, meditating in God's presence was what sustained me. As I said earlier, if I did not have Jesus in my life, I can almost guarantee that I would have died. Because when I was in the ICU, even though I did have Jesus, I thought that I was going to die. And I did not think that I was going to make it. I was literally praying to God already, thinking that I was going to die. I don't want to ever say that I doubted God because I didn't doubt God. But obviously, your flesh at some point is always going to outweigh the current circumstance. So I was terrified. I was terrified. But prayer literally was what broke through this entire experience i had people praying for me everywhere new jersey maryland pennsylvania puerto rico panama dominican republic i basically say that to say that god is real if after this experience you still question whether or not god is real i don't know what to tell you because this experience really I've never been a flaky Christian, but this experience really, really shook my faith. And I really am blessed to be alive, first of all, and I'm blessed that God chose me to continue to carry this message. It's just so crazy, the love that God has for us, for me, like I feel like this experience really just also showed me how much God loves me and how much God cares about me and how much of a purpose there is for my life if there wouldn't have been any purpose for my life i definitely could have gone out with this experience and i i would have been i would have been dead already but god had greater plans for me from the start from the very very beginning god had greater plans for me and satan knew this which is why he tried to attack me spiritually so if any of you were ministered by this testimony, please make sure to comment and definitely reach out to me if you guys like have any personal stories or anything like that that you want to talk about. Um, I encourage you guys to really, really seek God, truly. Like, life is so short and there isn't anywhere that I'd rather be than in the church and serving God like there really isn't anything that I'd rather be doing with my life with my time with my Tuesdays Thursdays and Sundays like this is literally my life and this is where this is where I want to be like there isn't anywhere that I'd rather be so the recovery process I'm gonna like shorten it like really shorten the recovery process because the, this video is already very long my recovery process was extremely difficult um I spent a whole month being extremely fatigued tired all the time 
I literally couldn't get back into my diet. Um, I lost 10 pounds, I think, <clears throat> during this experience because I wasn't eating. I was on a liquid diet the entire time. So I went from being 120 pounds to being 109 pounds when I got out of the hospital. My body was completely deflated. I was extremely weak. I was getting tired just standing in the shower, walking up the stairs. I couldn't babysit my brother because I couldn't pick him up. I didn't have any strength. So I was like that for about a month. And I also, at this point, also had to start school. So I was dealing with all of these symptoms. And then I also had to get back into studying, watching the lectures, and communicating with my teachers. So it was definitely a lot. But I thank God that I was able to get through it and that now I'm perfectly fine. I ended my semester with all A's and God definitely blessed me in that area. I just want to thank you guys for watching this video and if you enjoyed it or if you were ministered to by this experience please share it on your social media share it with your friends share it with your family um and yeah god bless you guys so much and thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys soon